and welcome to Paula Armstrong Ceramics. So for this video I thought I would go through what oxides are and what they can be used and how they can be used in ceramics. Okay so what are oxides? The ones that I'm going to be concentrating on today are basically the ones that are made from metals. So they are the oxidation of metals. So we have things like um, copper, oxides, manganese dioxides, um, iron oxides, we have rutile, um, cobalt is another one that's quite common, cobalt will give you blue, coppers give you greens, manganese gives you a lovely brown, um, kind of a chocolatey, cool brown colour, uh, and if you overload it, it starts to go a bit metallic, which is gorgeous. Um, irons are, as you'd expect, they're a bit more warmer brown, they're like rusty colours. You can get different versions of that, so you can get iron oxide black or red. Um, so you can get lots of different uh, types of oxides. There are other oxides that we use in ceramics that we use as ingredients for mixing with glazes um, and that kind of thing. But I'm not going to concentrate on those. I'm going to concentrate on the ones that um, can be used directly onto the surfaces of clays as decorative media. So, the oxides that I use in the studio, the main ones that are used here, um, are um, manganese, which is a favourite of mine. It gives you a nice chocolate, cool kind of brown colour, quite dark. Um, if you put it on quite heavy, it, it will go slightly in the metallic. Um, it applies really nicely, so it paints on well and washes off easily. It's it's a nice nice one to use. Certainly, if it's if it's your first time using an oxide, it's a good starting oxide um, to have a go with. So, on this piece, I've got the glazed um, central and inside spaces, but this brown on the outside, on the edges here. This is manganese, so that's manganese dioxide. And you can see it's got a shine to it. It's gone slightly metallic. Most of the other oxides won't do that. It's why I like manganese so much. Um, but you can use it as a direct, as you can see, as a direct decorating medium. It can paint straight onto the clay. Okay. Um, I've also got iron oxide iron oxide black and iron oxide red. Um, both of those are, as it's iron oxide, it gives you kind of the rusty tone. So they're much warmer um, brown colours. Um, the black is obviously darker and the red is, is slightly more into the red tones. Um, they're very matte, whereas the manganese can give a slight sheen and you get that slight metallic. The iron oxides are very matte. They're, they, they are the colour they are and it's as matte as the clay um, that you're applying them to. Um, another one we've got is Rutile. Rutile is quite a nice one in that it's one of the paler colours. It's a, it's a much paler brown colour. It's almost like a tan, a little bit toward the mustardy colour. Um, this is all without glazes on top. This is straight application. As soon as you add glazes, some of the colours change, just, just to make that clear. So yeah, it gives a nice paler colour, so it can work really nicely if you want a slightly more subtle tone um, with your pieces. Um, can work well as a wash for things, um, figurative things, quite nicely sometimes. Um, copper, we have copper oxide. Um, I ha actually have copper oxide and copper carbonate. Copper oxide I find easier to apply, it's it's not quite as fine a powder as the carbonate, um, but they work well for um, applying a very dark black kind of colour um, to your pieces. Copper is one of the ones that will change if you put a glaze near it. If you put a glaze near copper it turns green. Um, so if you're just applying the, the oxide or the carbonate it will be a very dark 
kind of black colour. Um, it's not quite black, it's probably a charcoal kind of colour. It's that, it's that kind of range. Again, very matte surface on that one. Um, actually, and Rutile is a very matte surface too. I do have Cobalt. Um, and we use it occasionally because it's such a pretty colour of blue. Um, it's traditional ceramics blue. Um, but it can be very messy. Um, it's, it's quite powdery and it's a very strong pigment. So it can get on your fingers accidentally, you brush it off, you touch something else, you put a fingerprint on a piece where you don't want it. So when you're handling cobalt, be very careful with it. Now, all of these are applied um, by mixing them with water. Depending on how strong you want the colour to be is how much water you mix in. But generally, it's a lot of water to a little bit of oxide. Because you don't want a really, really thick coat of the oxide, especially if you're not putting a glaze over the top, because it will just look like a chunk of powdery something on the surface rather than it and it will fill in texture and stuff rather than it adding decoration to a piece um, so be careful how thick you do this you want it watery that's what you're what you're looking for you think think watercolor paints that is we're, we're talking that kind of consistency not acrylics or oils um, and you apply it on either like I say using paintbrush or you can sponge it on um, and then wash it back off. Most commonly it's a, an oxide wash that goes on just because that works so well um, at highlighting textures. You can apply oxides with different tools. So you can apply them, like brush them on with a brush and be very precise about where you're doing, paint, be very painterly with them. Um, you can apply with a sponge, so you sponge on the texture. This is what I did for my college pieces because I wanted pieces that looked slightly aged and um, almost metallic, um, as if they'd been buried in the ground for a long time. I sponged on layers of oxides with bits of glaze, with bits of stain, and I just layered all the surface and it made this beautiful aged looking mottled surface. Um, so a sponge is great for, for that kind of thing. The most common way to use an oxide is to put it on and then wash it back. So that you use a sponge to wash off the oxide from the highest surfaces and you leave the oxide in all of the dips and the textures because it really highlights the textures in a sculptural piece. One of the downsides for oxides is in the kiln because they are um, metallic elements they can give off toxic fumes. It also means um, in their powdered forms, if you're ever handling dry oxides, please, please wear a mask um, so that um, you're not breathing in the dust. Um, I also recommend for my students when they're handling oxides, even in its watered down forms, which is how it's usually applied, you add a little bit of water, well, you add quite a bit of water actually, it's a little bit of oxide, more, a lot of water. Um, in that state, wear gloves um, so that you're protecting your hands and your skin. They will stain your fingers, um, but they, they're they not great for you either um, uh, your, on your skin, especially with your hands, because then of course you go off and you touch things and you eat and uh, yeah, it just, I suggest you wear gloves as well as using the mask when they're, um, when they're in their powdered forms, just to keep yourself safe especially if you're going to use them a lot. You can put glaze over the top of oxides. Um, you, it's best if you can to dip, um, but dip in, don't dip, don't have a big bucket of glaze and dip in the big bucket because the oxides will contaminate the whole of the glaze in the bucket. Try and dip in a smaller bucket that is for covering that oxide um, because it will some of the powder, because it's so powdery, it will come off in the glaze a bit. Um, and some oxides, oxides are, um, because they're elements, they will react with other elements within the glazes. And in fact, they are used within glazes to produce certain reactions, not just colorants. So um, be careful um, what 
glazes that you're putting over the top um, because you might get some some other reactions and it could be amazing um, but it might be very very different to what you think and what you're trying for so be a little careful with that um, on that front you can brush um, glaze over the top of an oxide as well uh, if you've got like a, a brush on transparent but again be aware that as you're doing that you're going to be mixing the powder into the glaze a bit and it's going to be moving away from where you actually applied it um, on the clay so it might not again come out quite the way you expected um, with that like under glazes you can apply an oxide at different stages so you can put an oxide on your greenware or you can put an oxide on your bisqueware um, you can actually apply an oxide under a glaze or over a glaze it works both ways because they are they will react with the glaze um, and fuse um, they can go on either side under or over a glaze okay i think that covers everything the, for oxides as decorating medium there are other ways of using oxides so we can add them to slips to color slips we can add them to glazes to color glazes like i say if you put them in with glazes though be aware that they will react with the other ingredients the glazes so they could do things like lower the temperature that it fires to um, you could change them from a gloss to a matte um, there are all sorts of things that because they react with the other ingredients you need to test if you're going to add um, oxides to a glaze uh, actually into the glaze it's worth testing and um, actually if you're going to do anything that's decorative please it's worth testing before you apply them to any piece that is precious to you for sure um, because things don't always go quite exactly how you expect them to even when you've seen somebody else do it um, and it's turned out amazing there are too many variables um, involved in in the process so please do test <laughs> before you apply to anything that's precious um yeah so i think that's basically everything that i'm going to cover for the oxides video this time if you have any questions as always please do feel free to ask them and i will answer them as soon as i can okay i'll see you again soon bye